Okay, now I'm sorry to disturb, but your voice is not clear. It's it's making very weird noise. It's not coming clear. No. No, not yet. Still the same. Nope, still the same. My voice is going out clear, but your voice is not coming. Nope, no change. Yeah, Prada, uh, so why don't I start? All right, uh, my voice is going clear. So let me just start and uh, uh, take over, all right? So hello everyone and welcome to uh, yet another uh, event organized by Nehru Planetarium. Uh, I hope my voice is clear to all of you. Uh, my name is Snake Isri. Uh, I've been an amateur astronomer for the last 25 years. And uh, for the last 12 years, I've been pursuing astronomy as a career. Uh, I've been working uh, with several organizations in the field of science popularization. And uh, my roots have been associated with the planetarium uh, ever since I was a school kid. And it's been a pleasure uh, coming here on this program and uh, sharing with all of you what I have learned in these many years. Uh, the topic for today uh, what we have chosen is uh, uh, Skywatch, being friends with stars. 
uh, one of the major key aspects of astronomy is to look at the sky. And today I'm going to give you a little bit of introduction about uh, uh, stargazing and uh, observing the skies. So uh, stay with me. Uh, I'll just share my uh, presentation with all of you. And uh, I just hope you all will like it. So Skywatch, being friends with stars. Uh, stars are very far away, but uh, the best part is that they are always there in the sky as the sun sets. They emerge out and they appear to be very beautiful. And since a very early age, we are introduced to stars. Not many of us realize, but I think in kindergarten or uh, at a very, very early age, when they start school, we uh, learn this poem, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Stars, How I Wonder What You Are, Up Above the World So I, Like a Diamond in the Sky. So this is exactly how the stars are in the sky. All right. Uh, I'm going to show you a video here that basically uh, captures the stars in the sky and our planet Earth. Uh, this will give you a little bit of understanding about how fascinating the sky is and how beautiful it looks. The audio will come uh, in a nick of time.
So that was uh, a very uh, fascinating video shot by astronauts on board ISS showing you our beautiful planet as well as the beautiful skies that they witness. Uh, we live on Earth and uh, we live in uh, India precisely to be very honest and uh, this is how India looks at night. So you see all the bright spots within uh, the borders of India. These are all the cities uh, which has uh, developed or are developing. As a result, there are a lot of lights that you can even see from the space. And in the previous video, you must have seen a lot of places where you can see bright lights illuminating the skies or the cities. And uh, while it looks very beautiful, uh, these lights in the cities, uh, there are certain areas which are not as bright. Look at the western uh, part of India or the southeastern part or in the Himalayas uh, in, the, uh, in the north uh, or uh, along the western ghats in southwest. So these are some of the places where uh, the development is not there or the lights are not there. But rest everywhere around, we have a lot of lights and see what happens because of that. The sky looks great. So when you are living in cities, you go out in the evening, probably on the terrace or on the ground, you look up towards the sky. What you see is a gray or a, a, you know, a slightly whitish sky in the night. Uh, the clouds are also visible. Uh, they appear as a white or a light gray patch. There are some stars which are visible and these stars are, uh, you know, the handful uh, so from some places you can see five stars, from some places you can see 20 stars, but more or less not more than that from city limit. And these are the brightest ones in the sky. So what exactly happening is, we are losing stars and now as we grow and we venture into this field, we realize that uh, the poem that we learned earlier needs to be changed. So. Now it goes like, twinkle, twinkle, little star. Now I wonder where you are, up above the world so high, disappearing from my night sky. Because the stars are there, the stars are there in the sky. Uh, we can't see them from our cities. And why we can't see them uh, is the stars are not visible from the cities due to excessive light pollution. Here is a picture from my uh, location I took last year. And you can see the glare from the uh, lights around my locality. And just the sky above these buildings appears to be slightly whitish, grayish. It's all because of the light pollution. And this light pollution is all around us. It doesn't matter which part of the country you live. This light pollution is always there because we live in a developed uh, urban areas and uh, the malls or the street lights and all of these are reason behind it. So what happened is that these lights are, uh, you know, uh, they create an artificial blanket when combined with the air pollutants, the dust, smog and everything and hence block the light from the paint stars. First thing we need to do when we jump into this hobby or the field of astronomy or stargazing is that we first need to find out uh, a dark location around our city. So some people can find this location 50 to 80 kilometers away. Some needs to travel three to 400 kilometers away. It all depends on your geographic location. The second thing you need to find is a good astronomy club in your area. If you're living in a big city, there are already planetariums and science centers where there are a lot of astronomy enthusiasts who visit and might be an astronomy club. An amateur astronomy club is already existing. You can be a part of it and you can meet all these people and you can plan your excursions out with them. Another very interesting thing is if you are already uh, have a basic understanding of the sky and if you love traveling, 
you can simply have a family vacation or a you know a, a family trip planned to some of these places where you can carry your own telescope and have a nice camping experience or uh, you know a holiday experience with your family your parents your siblings your uh, wife or husband or anywhere who you have in the family they can all travel together and enjoy the skies together now i like this last part very much because uh, a lot of my friends and family are interested in astronomy so my family members are there with me some of the times now what you choose will offer you what you will get there so i live in delhi uh, and delhi has a lot of satellite towns around uh, you know uh, covering all around it so what happen is that i need to pick up a location which is good enough for me now sometimes uh, i do not have enough time so i just go on a quick one night outing so i see uh, a sky something like what is on the left of the screen here you can see a lot of light is illuminating the horizon and the stars are visible only above a certain height and that's to a little less number of stars while when i have a very uh, you know a long duration for vacation i go to the mountains uh on the right you can see the image uh, there are a lot more stars the stars are visible very close to the horizon and uh, you get a fascinating views of the stars the difference is even with uh, you see uh, the difference is that once you are on the plains very close to a big city uh, the air pollutants are also there as a result the light is scattered on the other hand when you are in a cleaner or uh, you know a place which is very far away from cities the light pollution is very less hence the light scattering is very low as a result you will have much better experience when you are uh, you know going on for such excursions so what do you expect there so if you are on a dark sky location which are abundantly available in india the sky looks black unlike gray in city the sky looks dark the sky looks black clouds are not actually visible so the clouds may be there in the sky but you can't see the clouds they will appear as a dark patches only so that part of the space i will not show any star and that is how you make out that there are clouds in the sky and of course there are a lot of stars not just the bright ones but even the fainter ones are very clearly visible so rather than seeing one star from one constellation you get to see the entire shape of the constellation and you can easily relate to the name and the shapes of the constellations how our ancestors used to see hundreds of thousands of years ago now i personally love to take pictures of the sky so i did this experiment back in 2019 when i traveled to a dark sky location and i chose to take a picture of orion nebula which is on the left when i came back to my city uh, my house i decided to try the shot again and what i got was is visible on the right so you can see the contrasting difference between how good the skies are away from the city and how bad the skies are within the city all right so the background is different the amount of nebulosity you see is different and of course the number of stars you see is also different so sky watch essentially means you have to travel to a dark location otherwise your options will be very limited and also i feel and i have met a lot of people a lot of great talented people who have a you know a great uh, artistic nature or uh, set of skills uh, and astronomy has been the tool for them to express that all right first of all you stay very close to the nature when you are going for stargazing all right just look at the sunrise that we had after a long cold tiring night of stargazing from the himalayas the views are breathtaking and it really you know uh, it's really an incentive for you when you are traveling so not just travel for the sky but also travel for your surroundings the nature and everything and this is possible only when you are doing sky stargazing because uh, when most of the people are still kind of trying to wake up and move out of the bed 
you are basically packing all your equipment and trying to go back to sleep. And this is the view that you will get while many others are going to miss. So it's always a rewarding hobby or uh, you know your passion or interest. You will find yourself travel to uh, you know a less travel roads, uh, uh, new places uh, where the skies are really good. Uh, this picture I was uh, I took from a town uh, called Kimsar in Rajasthan, which is about six hundred kilometers away. Now, when you listen to Rajasthan, there are five, six destinations that you will find always people talking about, like Jaipur, Udaipur, Jaisalmer, Jodhpur, and another few, uh, some bird centuries, Saraska wildlife century, and so on. But these are some of the towns that offer you a very different experience. You travel to these places, and right outside your hotel room, this is what you get. All right. So it becomes very interesting. When you're traveling there, your efforts are less and you get to see new places. You meet with new kind of people, culture and so on. Explore the entire uh, night, explore the sky for the entire night with your family and friends. Uh, in this picture, uh, we were eight friends who traveled together and we had a good stargazing session. We had our telescopes, our equipment and of course the stars in the background. So it really gives you a very different experience. Hanle, uh, the heaven on earth. India is the highest observatory located. Uh, you get to explore, you get to visit to these places and uh, you can be absolutely mesmerized by the skies it offer. And it really helps you, you know, uh, develop a knack for nature because you are you're traveling from across the lens and breadth to enjoy good skies also. Now, when should you travel? The first and foremost thing is you should travel whenever there is a very special celestial event happening. There is no excuse to skip that because these events are going to happen at their own pace. And living in cities sometimes really makes you uh, vulnerable to miss out on these events. The first of the foremost, the most amazing of all the events is uh, solar eclipses. The eclipses happen around the world and it may or may not happen in your city. And if it is a total eclipse or a central eclipse, you should really travel because eclipses are one of the most amazing celestial alignments nature can offer. And not only it looks beautiful, but there's a lot of science you can do with it. So as a student or as an amateur, there is a scientific aspect involved that you can always take forward with your imaging or your observation. And a lot of people have contributed to the scientific community based on their observation. All right. So it becomes very important that you do explore these possibilities because these opportunities will come probably five or six times in the entire lifespan. You should travel when there are special events like meteor shower. Now, meteor shower will be visible over entire world. So why should you travel? That will be your first question and a very logical one. But the problem is with the light pollution, when the number of faint stars are not visible, just imagine how many faint meteors you are going to miss out on if you are just planning to observe from your terrace. The light pollution is going to eat out probably 90% of the meteors that you can see from a dark location. I remember in 2013, I went to a place ahead of Gurgaon where I spotted more than 300 meteors in a span of four hours. From the city, my friends could only locate 30, 35 meteors in the entire night. Such was the difference. So it is essentially important that you travel for these events and explore and enjoy the possibilities. New moon nights are also very, very, very important. The moon is very bright. And when it is uh, reflecting the sunlight at night, the sky becomes very bright. And hence, a lot of objects cannot be seen or photographed. So astronomers are always very keen on going out and looking at the stars. 
during a new moon night session that is when the moon is not present in the night or in hindi as we call amavasya around that time when you go out the skies are darker and you get to see a lot more stars as compared to on a, a night when moon is there in the sky deep sky observation that is the galaxies nebulae the fainter star milky way all of these will be visible better uh, when the moon is not in the sky so astronomers always plan their excursions over a weekend around this time now as i was saying uh, astronomy has been a great tool for amateurs or interested uh, students and uh, you know uh, everyone in general to express their talent to show their skills uh, this famous painting uh, called starry night by vincent van gogh that came into uh, existence in about early 1700s uh, when the telescopes were still in, in fancy really depicts how the sky would was uh, you know or how the scenery would look like from his place a lot of people take up artistry and uh, they really express their views and their passion for the skies like this image here is actually not a image taken by a camera but rather a painting so if someone who is watching here and uh, is a painter i think it's time to go on the internet get a nice image of the sky and uh, you know just paint or replicate it using your brushes or colors or sketches or whatever uh, skills you have it is very fascinating and people are actually becoming very famous because look at the artwork they are creating it's as good as a real image of the sky right photography now today everyone owns a dslr everyone owns a nice fancy camera and they have a photography page as well if you are interested in night sky use this tool use your equipment to showcase the world what a good night sky looks like Here is a picture of Milky Way rising in the month of March, very early in the morning. In this picture, on the right side of the image, you see the darkness of the sky, while on the left side of the image, you are seeing the uh, astronomical twilight ending. That is, the you know, uh, the sun is rising, so the sky is getting like slightly brighter. how can you express these colors or these shades of the sky to someone which uh, uh, you know uh, with your words no words in the in the dictionary can paint a good picture of this but a picture can really express what you have observed what you have learned and what you are sh showing all right if you are an artist who is good with a video cameras or who is good with video editing here is something that you should you know try a time lapse video of the night sky just see how the stars are rising and now the milky way is also rising see as the moon sets how the entire scenery changes into darkness this is the difference what the moonlight causes all right and create these time lapses show the world what you have captured and basically help people or you know just just express yourself in whatever best possible way you can and this is one advantage of traveling to the dark locations we can never get such skies from any city limits now some of the upcoming opportunities uh, where you can travel or you can you know look up in the sky the first one is a meteor shower uh the orionics meteor shower it has been a very prominent one with a uh, promising uh, meteor observations every year it falls around october 22nd uh so you have got about a month and a half to plan and go for a good observation site go for a dark location with your family your friends or your nearby uh, amateur astronomy group and enjoy the sparkles in the sky it's 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 really beautiful another promising one is leonid meteor shower which happens around november 17th and the geminids uh, meteor shower which happens around december 13th now geminids offer a very different kind of meteors which are called as the fireballs or the bolides so you see a piece of rock 
uh, burning in the sky and sometimes it explodes as well. It's a very fascinating view. Uh, and you should travel or you should, you know, make an effort to go out somewhere and look at these opportunities. This is how you will uh, not only witness the celestial marvels, but also you will get to learn a lot about how beautiful the space and the cosmos is. Now, there are certain events which you can do or observe from the city itself. For example, the conjunction of planets or planets and moons. Uh, planets are very bright objects as compared to the stars. And uh, the planets are more or less visible from any part of the world, uh, irrespective of how much of the light pollution you have. So here you don't have to travel, but this is certainly one thing that you should look at. Uh, for example, conjunction of planets and moon. So moon, Jupiter and Saturn are going to come in a very close vicinity uh, around September 17th, October 14th and November 10th or 11th. So these are the three, four days when you will go out and look due south, southwest and you'll see the trio in the sky. All right. Uh, you can take your camera and you can start shooting the sky from today and you can see how the movement of all the planets and all the uh, you know stars in the background are really changing this can be a good project but this uh, you know a screenshot from a software really suggest how we can you know what to expect there moon and venus will come close on 9th of september which is just 9 days from now Moon and Mars will come closer in December, on, on December 3rd. Now, remember, it is going to be an early morning event. All right. It will be visible early in the morning. So you have to get up like really early. So these are some of the opportunities where planets and moon can come closer. And if you have a planetarium software uh, or the sky software, you can actually look at or search for these events on your own, depending upon what software you use. There are a lot of new tools that you can learn and you can use in order to be alerted about these events much in advance, okay? Now, one of the rare kind of uh, conjunctions happen are uh, the planets and the deep sky. Venus and the uh, cat's eye cluster in uh, Scorpius constellation will be coming very close to each other on October 15. It will be very low in the western horizon, so make sure the west where the sun sets usually is a place with clear view of the horizon. If you have a tall building in that side, you probably need to move away from your home just for this shot. All right. Uh, the planet and the deep sky, when they come closer, it gives you a very nice opportunity to take a photograph using your telescope. The Venus and Milky Way will gonna come closer about 13 days later on October 28. So for this, you need to travel to a dark sky location because let's be realistic, Milky Way is not going to be visible from the city limits. So if you are in the city, you can see Venus you know where is Milky Way, but you can't get Milky Way in the picture. So you have to go out to a dark location where you can see Milky Way very clearly. Now, eclipses. In the recent past, eclipses have been, uh, you know, a highlight for all the astronomy enthusiasts, whether seniors or juniors, newbies or well-experienced. Eclipses have been fascinating in more than one ways. All right. First of all, the image that you are seeing here, which depicts a corona, that is the atmosphere of the sun being visible, it's a rare sight and cannot be seen other than uh, in case of a total solar eclipse. The image you saw earlier of a, a ring was formed during annular solar eclipse. Now, I have personally traveled to five different eclipses, which were all central. My first such eclipse chase was on January 15th when I was in Varkala in Kerala, where I experienced my first annular solar eclipse. Trust me, it's been 11 years. I've been hooked to eclipse chasing like anything. 
I was so mesmerized by the view that in 2017, I took a long vacation. I traveled to the US and I watched the Great American Eclipse, which was the total eclipse and the first total eclipse of uh, my lifetime. And I had an amazing experience there. After that, in 2019, uh, around Christmas, I traveled to Kerala and I watched the December 26th annular solar eclipse. And then in 2020, even during the pandemic, I decided to take the risk and I traveled alone to Suratgar, where I met with some friends. And we observed the June 2020, uh, the June 2020, uh, June 21, 2020 annular solar eclipse also. The next target is October 23, when I'm planning to travel to Texas. And in April 24 also, where I'm more inclined towards Texas right now. But let's see where I will end up. Eclipses have been something that we can't see it otherwise. All right. These events happen uh, twice in a year. But wherever it will happen, it might not be very easy to travel. For example, the next solar eclipse is going to happen uh, in the uh, South Pacific Ocean around Antarctica. So it is not only very expensive to travel, it is also extremely cumbersome to travel to those locations. So wherever it is, it was possible for me, I travel uh, or I will travel there. This can be a very good opportunity for people who, you know, who love to travel and they can you know, uh, align it with some celestial event. And it could be a nice vacation opportunity for some of you who are, you know, interested in doing eclipse chasing. I know people who have traveled to more than 70 countries in the harshest of environment to see eclipses. And they have seen more than 70 eclipses, of course. So it becomes very, uh, a very you know, uh, uh, interesting events to observe. Now, astronomy is not only about looking at the sky, it is also about understanding what we can see in the sky. And the most simplest way is to have some planetarium software on your phone or on your computer. I prefer to be mobile. As a result, I have a lot of astronomy applications installed on your phone. Now, this is just the first page of the folder in which all my astronomy applications are there. And Sky Safari is something that I use very frequently. Night Sky is also very good. And Celestron has its own application called Sky Portal that allows you to connect with Celestron telescopes and command them to move around. And then I have a host of other offers that I use. Okay. This is what the sky would look like from my location, the picture on the extreme right. Now, the Ma planet Mars, Mercury, Venus, and every other object, wherever they are, uh, the sun in the sky, my horizon, all the stars and everything, whatever are going to be visible, it shows me. I can go backward and forward in time to exactly understand how the sky on a specific date was looking or going to look like when I'm going for an observation. All right. Uh, Wherever you are planning, this becomes very important because your application is going to tell you exactly what to expect in the sky. So when you go out, you know when a particular planet is going to rise or set. Can we see Andromeda galaxy on a specific date? The software will tell you. If you can, then at what time it will be visible, what time it is rising or setting and so on. These apps have really changed how we do astronomy. And uh, in the past, we used to look at the sky and understand what the scenario will be in 10 to 15 days from now. IMD is doing a great job in predicting weather. And astronomy is highly weather dependent. Everything looks good. You go out, you have planned everything uh, in advance, you have made your bookings, your reservation, or you have carried the telescope two stories up on the terrace, but suddenly the clouds roll in. All your effort goes in vain. So keeping a check on weather is very important. I made this mistake long time ago, and I had telescopes lying out in the open. We were doing some imaging, and at about 1 o'clock, I said, 
कि आई एम गोइंग इन माई रूम फॉर अ कप ऑफ कॉफी एंड आई जस्ट यू नो रेस्ट फॉर वाइल half an hour later i woke up to the thunderstorm and all my equipment was getting drenched in rain not to mention i lost some precious electronic equipment in the rain and that was a lesson learned that always keep a check on weather what's going to happen next uh another thing keep your equipment clean and aligned at all times the mirrors the camera uh, sensor eye pieces uh, your cables everything that you're carrying dust is the enemy of telescopes or binoculars never leave them unattended always keep them clean a cleaner equipment will show you better sky and even fainter objects mark my words i have experienced it in last 20 years and i can tell you with assurance that the cleaner the uh, equipment the better the skies are going to look like now what kind of equipment are good for you before i jump into all the options whatever equipment you already have or whatever equipment you can use on a regular basis is the best equipment don't go on advertisements or what the other person has as a, a benchmark for what is the right equipment for me trust me on it whatever small or big telescope or binocular you have already it is the best equipment go out and start using it second whatever equipment you can carry around or you can afford is the best equipment don't stress on it naked eye observation is by all means the best experience of star gazing just imagine going out with your family to a very nice place away from the city all the quietness and the uh, you know the dark sky the stars above you sitting in the lawn on the chair or lying on the mattress on the grass and just seeing the sky moving there is no better experience than that mark my words with experience i'm telling you as a kid this is what i used to do on my grandparents house we used to sleep on the terrace and i could see for hours how the sky was moving that really hooked me into the hobby this is the best way you can enjoy the night sky now if you want to go deeper into the night sky that is you want to enjoy more close up views of the stars carry a binocular a binocular as small as 10 by 50 or as large as 25 by 100 all commercially available pick up one based on your convenience go out and point it in the sky trust me you will not regret using a binocular in fact i my recommendation is start with the binocular before you jump into buying a big expensive telescope binoculars are very easy they come in your backpack you practically can take it anywhere you are traveling by bus by train by flight by your personal vehicle even you can cycle down the road you know to have a good view of it a telescope is very bulky very cumbersome binoculars are very easy to set up and easy to use carry of a small tripod to give you stability at night a manual telescope is a first choice for visual observers sorry the to people uh, who interrupt uh, uh, yes a uh, snake sorry to interrupt in between uh, is my voice is coming to you now yes now it is much clear yeah much clear okay because you're talking about the binocular as an enthusiast i also wanted to know uh, what what uh, binocular you recommend to start with as as a very fresh one to start the stargazing so meanwhile because you are on the topic so i just interrupted you to get more clarification on how to start with the binocular and what all binocular in in the specific range we can start with all right uh, so binoculars are, are available in different sizes uh starting with 7 to 21 which is like a very small binocular uh the first number represents the magnification it can offer the uh, multiplication sign is uh, you know just for reference and the second number uh mentions about the aperture or the size of the lens in the front that is how much light it can collect now there is no such thing as a good binocular or bad binocular 
we need to look at three aspects of it the first one is the aperture and magnification the second is the uh, convenience with which you can handle and the third one is the price bracket if you go for a less uh, expensive binoculars the optics are going to be of cheap quality which is going to hinder your experience but if you go for a premium quality binocular your uh, binoculars will be expensive as a result the budget might constrain uh, going for a bigger one when you are looking at the sky you are always at a very awkward position when you are looking you know your head is tilted backward your neck is up you are pointing towards the sky holding binocular for a very long uh, duration is going to be tiring and painful for your hands as well as your neck so always use a tripod so that eliminates the size factor of it now what is left is how big of the aperture you want and how easily you want to uh, carry it a 7 by 21 will weigh about 200 grams very easy to carry you can even keep it in your cargo pockets a 25 by 100 will be weighing about 4 and a half kilos so carrying it in your backpack is going to break your spine you know your back you can't carry it all the time so any binocular you choose based on your budget based on availability and based on uh, all these constraints is a good binocular and it is going to give you a great view of it understand magnification is inversely proportional to the field of view so the higher the magnification your field of view is going to be smaller that means it will give you a bigger better look of the object but it can be very tedious to find an object as well. you should have a good understanding of the sky my recommendation as a starter you should always opt for a 10 by 50 which is a standard number and a lot of people have this binocular even if they have big telescopes or not because it really gives you a decent magnification and a good field of view to you know begin with so a 10 by 50 is good a uh, 12 by 60 15 by 70 20 by 80 25 by 100 these are just the you know the numbers where you are in, you know incrementing uh, and that will come with experience and uh, later at a time when you really feel the need for it also uh, look at the brand or the company you are buying from uh these binoculars start from 2000 2500 goes all the way up to 25 3000 the same specifications the only difference is in the optics the better the optics the higher will be the price does that answer your question yes uh, thank you for the clarification all right now the manual telescopes are the first preference for visual observer the telescope really gives you a very nice views of the deep sky objects uh, a very detailed view of the craters on the moon and uh, the surface features on the planets and a decent size to start with is about 8 inches of dobsonian uh the macro telescope means you have to use the telescope at your will there is no computer or no electronics involved that will help you locate the objects in the sky so like in this picture though you can see the observer is trying to reach something using a red light what the observer is trying to do is trying to find out a, a deep sky object in the sky using a star atlas or a star map pretty conventional old school method today we have the mobile apps that really shows us where the object is but then this is an old school way of locating the objects in the sky The telescope on the right is a 8-inch trust Dobsonian uh, that you can buy from the market, and you can use it to look at a very great detailed views of nebulas and galaxies. And it is the first preference for visual observation. In fact, recommended. If you are not very keen on learning about the sky, but you still want to do deep sky observation, you should go for motorized telescopes. you can see all the tables around it means this telescope has a small computer that requires electric power and this electricity will control the monitor or control the telescope based on a small remote control which is hanging between the legs of the uh, telescope using this remote 
you can align the telescope first thing in the evening and then pretty much view all the objects in the sky that are visible that night. Be it a galaxy, be it a planet, be it a star cluster, be it a nebula, be it moon or anything. These motorized telescopes really come in very handy for the beginners who have a buckload of money part to buy the first telescope because this piece of equipment will start costing you uh, in the upward of 60,000 and will cost you uh, as much as the bigger telescope you want. And finally, if you have a motorized telescope, you will sooner or later dive into astrophotography, which is ultimately the, you know, the last step for every amateur astronomer I know across the globe. If you have a decent telescope, all you need to do is to hook your camera, which I believe today every modern household has. Connect a camera and take fascinating images of the deep sky objects. Like in this one, there's an astro camera connected to this and the cables are going to control it using the laptop behind the table, uh, you know, uh, on the table behind the telescope. So this is where the buck stops. You start with naked eye, Sooner you'll realize you want to go deeper into space, you'll buy a binocular. As you grow into this hobby, as you grow in life, when you can drive a car, if you already not have one right now, you can, uh, you know, invest in a bigger telescope, carry it around, move to the motorized one when you are, uh, you know, uh, when you are really willing to make less effort in the sky and spend more time visually observing the object and finally attaching a camera because now you are getting older, getting slightly tighter, uh, you know, tired at night, take a picture while the images are being taken, go and see. So there are different ages, different aspects of astronomy and uh, it's like the evolution of an amateur astronomer. So we start with one and we uh, reach to be. Uh, and that is astrophotography. Now, what are the do's and don'ts in astronomy? So this is very important. The first and foremost thing is read and learn. Irrespective of what age you have, what experience you have, reading is always essential and you will always learn new things. Read books on astronomy. Learn the science behind it learn the concepts the, or the physics or the chemistry behind it that will really help you appreciate what you are seeing all right connect with people in this hobby when you are interacting with other people you not only learn about new things but you also see new possibilities new opportunities you learn and acquire new skills and you will uh, be open to a you know a pandora's box opens in front of you where you get to experience different things and new things related to the field. Do not go for a commercial vendor right away. There are a lot of companies, including mine, that offers astronomy excursions. While it might look very nice, sometimes I've seen the people who have started are a bit lost during uh, you know, their first or second observation. They don't know what to do. When you go with an amateur astronomy club, You'll feel more included in there because it is due to the mutual passion and not because of some business or profit mindset. Go with your local astronomy club. Go with the people around you who already have this experience. Spend little. Explore more. See what is good for you, what works for you. And then go for what you can afford and what you can own at that point. All right. Unfortunately, many cities and many science centers or planetariums does not have a very active astronomy club. But Facebook and social media, Instagram, uh, Twitter, they all have the presence of these amateur astronomers from different locations. Get in touch with them, find about the local people around, get in touch with those local people and create your own club if required. Schools have astronomy clubs. Contact your teachers if you're a school kid. Uh, if they can't start an astronomy club in your school. And that way, it would be a very good learning experience for you all. Attend as many star parties as possible. So when you hook up to the internet and find these local clubs around you, you'll also get an update about the star parties. Uh, go there. Possible, uh, if possible for you, invest time 
explore the variety of uh, equipment see how people are using it learn about it you know uh, which will suit you so i have seen a person buying a telescope and selling it in 3 months because he did, he had a small hatchback and the telescope won't fit in i saw a person upgrading to a bigger car because he wanted a bigger telescope and the small telescope would just not look good for him so you see it's a ripple effect you buy one thing you need another and then you need another and so on so see what you can start with how long you can go with and then plan don't jump into it when traveling often to dark sky locations these locations are found in remote places uh, where sometimes there is very poor connectivity security might be an issue so travel in a group is advised prefer a good resort or a good hotel location from where you can do stargazing rather than leaving out in the dark and uh, then being stranded on the road for the entire night trust me it is not safe Rent a telescope services have now started coming up. A lot of companies are now uh, renting uh, the used products or the return products uh, to cover up their prices. Uh, it is a very good way in which you can use different equipment, whatever available, and see for yourself what will work best for you. So that will also save you from investing right away before you can start with the hobby. and you can explore different possibilities so let's say one time you have a you know a 4 inch refractor the next time you carry a 10 inch opsonian then a motorized telescope and so on so it would be very nice for you all uh ask questions as much as possible it is a very good practice wherever possible whenever possible whoever uh, it concerns ask your question asking question may sound stupid for 5 minutes but after the answer you feel enlightened you have learned a new thing not asking will keep you stupid for the rest of your life all right because you'll tend to make mistakes after that and it is very important that you ask questions if you have a doubt ask question if you don't know about something ask a question and the most important one if you have nothing to you know if you have nothing happening around ask a question there are certain don'ts in astronomy as well things that you should keep in mind like do not rush during the entire presentation or the entire session i have been talking about start slow start with basics start with fundamentals do not rush you may have money to buy a telescope but you may not have the right knowledge which telescope to buy and trust me in all my trips all my interaction the first question i get is this telescope is good for me don't don't really you know jump into buying assess what is your requirement what is your budget what is the availability of the equipment and then go for it waiting for the right time is really essential equipment is precious and expensive buying your first telescope can be exciting but it is an expensive affair and remember some practice to carry your equipment around just the other day i was having a discussion in astronomy forum where the person was focused on buying a telescope which is easy to move he is not concerned about the price he is not concerned about the quality of the objects but he is only concerned about the movement because he lives on the sixth story and the telescope is very precious to him he wants to move the entire telescope in one go that is something like carry 80 20 kilos worth of equipment and he just wanted to keep the uh, weight as low as possible so these are some of the constraints make sure you have got the right equipment after thinking of all the aspects it is a never ending list of equipment irrespective of visual or photography you are always going to search for something new to make your experience better trust me it's a vicious cycle there's a saying in the west if you don't want your children to hook to drugs hook them to astronomy they will not have money to buy drugs and it is actually true once you start buying equipment you practically will not have money to do anything else uh, you know and buy anything doesn't mean like uh, fulfilling the necessities but getting into anything else so it's a very expensive hobby take precautions at all time thoro checklist are important trust me in the beginning i spent countless nights under the stars just looking at it because i forgot the memory card of my camera 
and sometimes I forgot a screw that will hold my camera to the telescope. Just one tiny little screw and my observation was ruined. One time I had the memory card but it was full from the last night and I could not empty it in time and I didn't have a laptop. I couldn't take new images on, you know, over and above. So I have spent many a nights like this making mistakes and I've learned it now. So I made a checklist. What needs to be done before I leave for the observation site, during the observation, how to set up an equipment. One of my friends lost a brand new camera because he didn't check whether his telescope was mounted well on the tripod. He set it up, he picked up his tripod and he started moving. Ten seconds later, he heard a boom. Tell us the camera went on the ground. He lost brand new lens. So these things can happen. Have a checklist. Follow it rigorously each and every step even if you have done it a hundred times there is no re no reason you'll not make a mistake on the hundred and first time so do not ignore them always use the red light if you are going to find your way along along in the observation ground if you are going to read something whatever always avoid using the bright lights bright lights are nuisance in 2013 a friend and, um, and I were going out, uh, had gone out actually to search for a comet. The comet would be visible about 5 in the morning. Just before the sky gets brighter due to sunrise, we had about 15-20 minutes of time. I was looking at, you know, looking through the telescope and my friend was looking into, uh, into the map and guiding me where I should find the comet. Five minutes into the uh, searching, the red light went off. He immediately took out his white torch and he opened it. And we couldn't observe the comet because our eyes were not adapted for the darkness anymore. And we lost it. We tried. We had to try the next night. And we made sure that this mistake doesn't happen. So using red light is very, very, very important. And more your eyes are adapted to it, the better the skies will be visible to you. So always give yourself some time, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, before you go out and observe. So stay in an absolute dark place or close your eyes. That will help you adapt to darkness better. Be gentle when using someone else's equipment. And it is not true for only equipment, but practically anything on the observation ground. If you break it, you bought it. That's the rule. So be careful when you're using someone else's equipment because they are precious to them. Always keep in mind that astronomy is a seasonal activity. So your friends are going to be there, but you can go up close personal with them only in specific season. Traveling can extend your season, of course. For example, astronomy has many limitations. The weather is one. The moon is another. So every month you get one new moon approx, and in a year's time you get about 12 to 13 new moons. Now, uh, that means your observation is limited to 12 to 30 nights in a year. And with Diwali on a new moon night and some other festivals which are dependent on the moon phase, your effective new moon night period is only about six nights in a year. So whatever you're going to do, you're going to use it for six months in a, in a year. Six nights in a year. And why that so? Four months of monsoon, Diwali, and fog, and everything in the plains are going to ruin most of it. It's an expensive hobby. A lot of investment goes into buying equipment, but traveling to dark location can add to this already hefty bill. It can be tiring as well for many for working odd hours in cold, hot weather. It can be difficult. Patience and dedication is the key. If you are patient, if you are dedicated, trust me, it will be wonderful. Astronomy is a rewarding activity as well. Seeing a source of light that has traveled for trillions of kilometers, you know, uh, it, it has taken, uh, it has traveled to that much distance, originating from a source which is millions and billions of kilometers away, uh, really makes you look special, make you feel special because you are seeing something which is already looking in the past. Uh, so what you are seeing uh, Andromeda Galaxy as tonight. Uh, it was 2.5 million years ago. So what is happening there tonight? Nobody knows. The sun you are seeing in the sky is also about 500 seconds into the past. All right. So you're not seeing real time, even though you feel you are seeing it real time, but you're only looking back in history. 
So astronomy can really make you turn time back around and you can see in the past. So it's like time travel. So it's very exciting. Plus, when you're learning about astronomy, when you're seeing the stars, when you're talking about the galaxies and all, you're talking on various aspects of science. For example, the physics, the chemistry, the biology, when you're talking about the life in the universe, or you're talking about technology when you are attaching your motorized mount and camera and trying to take pictures or how uh, space travel would be possible, you know, things like that. The engineering, the small compact equipment that is showing you so much deeper into space, so much further, you know, back in time, it's an engineering marvel. So you are learning about all of this. You are talking about this. And it really, you know, these are just some of the things you're going to discuss. And there are a lot of other things that I can't even pinpoint here. Pursuing this hobby will introduce you to many, many new aspects or activities in life. Introducing you to new people, a uh, new set of friends you will make other than the stars, culture, places, experiences right from day one when you, uh, you know, when you will start. And all these things are rewarding. Sooner or later, you will understand the importance of who we are, the human civilization will help you become more human and a lot more things. And it becomes very, very, very critical how you pursue it in the future. Thank you for being part of this great adventure. Uh, wish you clear skies in the future. Uh, don't forget, go up, look up, uh, you know, go out, look up in the sky, see the stars. Whenever you're traveling, carry a small binocular as possible. Just just pan around in the sky and you'll see a lot more new friends. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sne, for sharing such a wonderful presentation with all the budding minds who are present in this online discussion. And also, I like the way you uh, explain in a very, uh, like a pointer's way so that everyone, uh, a mature one or maybe a starter one can get a better clarification how to start this activity into a passion this hobby into a passion and on behalf of planetarium i generously want to thank you for taking up the session because of the technical glitch happens at the starting of the session but you took it very well and completed the session on time so thank you so much for that and thank you participants for your patience and giving so much time for this discussion so now we can take some of the question if you are interested to ask related to the presentation Anything comes in your mind related to the equipment, uh, related to the concepts or something, you can please go ahead and drop your message in the chat box. And I will uh, I will open that uh, question so that Snake can answer that. So we started getting the message. Nice to meet you, sir. So and any question you want to relatedly ask related to the discussion we had today? And as uh, meanwhile students are posting it, I really want to give emphasis on this thing that uh, very well said uh, you have pointed this thing. Like uh, any any participant or any uh, student, if you want to start this as a hobby, should have the better understanding of the concepts first. Because people have this tendency to buy expensive objects, in, uh, uh, expensive telescope first, and then to read the basics of the stars and constellation, which is not the right way. Because every time uh, we get people at the planetarium, the parents are curious to buy expensive telescope to gift their kids to start the stargazing activity, which is actually, I think, a waste of uh, waste of every penny. Because first, you have the better understanding about the concepts: what are the stars, constellations, and things like that, and then you can jump into buying things. And there are multiple options available, uh, varying to your budget. Uh, yeah, okay, that's we have one right. question. Yes. So I, I really appreciate you have mentioned this point and given very uh, detailed emphasis on the things. We should not jump into conclusion and we should not buy expensive object. Rather, you have to spend time in reading the concept first. Yeah, in, in, in last 12-13 uh, years of my professional career when I've been uh, re, uh, working with students, uh, basically, uh, this has been a very uh, common uh, problem with them. 
the first question in the first of the strawberry club they would ask is that uh, sir which telescope should i buy and i'm like first you need to see because it is not a easy choice even the most uh, uh, basic toy telescopes that you can get are about 12 13 15 thousand rupees and they will be useless after a couple of years because they have very limited observation opportunities you can see very uh, you know basic things from it and then you need to invest another 30 40 000 rupees in a new telescope which will further outlive uh, you know in another 5 years time so first use others equipment learn from there and then go for your own That's exactly now these many of the online things are also available many of the resources are available as as free so we can also uh, start our hobby with utilizing absolutely so we have one question i think a similar one can you tell the future happening in this space i think you have answered in terms of uh, what all the astronomical uh, events are taking place in the coming months you have mentioned during the presentation but uh, in a sneak peek if you can just get them yeah uh, a couple of things i would like to add because space is a very generic topic uh, other than what is happening in the sky uh, please keep an eye on uh, isro indian space research organization uh, they uh, recently launched a satellite uh, which got uh, failed due to some malfunction but they have corrected it and they they just a couple of days back they launched another satellite using the same system and it was successfully placed in uh, in the orbit uh, they are working extremely you know uh, in in a very tight limit now uh, to make sure gaganyaan will lift off in 2023 and this is something that we should really look forward to because not only it is a big achievement for our country but also it is uh, going to bring out new opportunity and possibilities for young students like you aditya who are very keen on space uh, you know learning about space and maybe uh, uh, 10 or 15 uh, years down the line maybe you are applying to become an uh, you know uh, gagan not uh, uh, as they call it uh, in india so uh, all the best to you if you are very keen on it uh, alan musk is sending some satellites up in space nasa is doing a lot of great work james cook telescope is going to be uh, going up so there's a lot of happening and again read online resources you will get to know a lot about it more than any individual can cover in any such sessions around yeah all right with this uh, we'll take the next one question uh, ritika chauhan and please suggest some dark spaces uh, dark um, spaces ritika, i think in terms of uh, having uh, night sky uh, having good sky views yeah ritika again uh, i can give you a long list but it would be better if i know which city you belong to because accordingly it will be easier for us to pinpoint if you live in delhi uh, where i live uh, the closest place that i can recommend is uh, uh, you know uh, tejara which is on tiwari alwar highway then anywhere in the mountains uh, could be good of course not shimla and manali like overcrowded hill stations but if you go to uh, other offbeat locations like sarahan uh, chel or uh, uh, jibhi or uh, you know uh, bhuntar kasol so these are uh, you know some of the places you can visit uh, rajasthan has a lot of great potential for dark sky location uh, when you are traveling uh, ahead of jaipur on uh, you know towards udaipur there are small villages around so uh, i would suggest you just google uh, you know uh, the lights uh, you know the light pollution map and you'll come on a link which will give you the exact uh, you know the condition of different places and once you have found a location there you can use google maps to pick up uh, a nice hotel in the look in that zone or you can uh, you know plan your journey with your family or friends and that way you can uh, work it out tejara would be closest from delhi which is about 100 odd kilometers so uh, you can travel in about 2 hours and you can come back in 2 hours with a good night observation there yes and she also wanted to know please explain manual telescope okay so manual telescope is uh, just a telescope which does not have a brain of its own 
all right so you have to do everything there for example if the telescope is uh, kept on the ground and you want to see the orion nebula you have to really move the telescope manually and point it in that direction where orion nebula is uh, it has a small eyepiece barrel from where you look and uh, there is a small device called focuser that will adjust the eyepiece distance which will help you focus uh, on the star or on the object very sharply so all of this has to be done manually now when you are using or opting a manual telescope that is when you have to move the telescope on your own when you have to do all these auxiliary things on your own the first thing you have to remember is what all will be visible in the sky and where to look at it a motorized or a go to telescope will have a small computer with over 40000 objects uh, list in its database and once you have taught the telescope where it is where it is looking and what time of the day or what date of the year it is it will basically take you to the play object directly so you just enter orion nebula in the keypad press enter and the telescope will move on its own and bam right you have orion nebula in the sky uh, through the telescope but with manual you have to do all of this on your own so uh, with a little more experience you will learn about the objects or the constellations in the sky and then you can do it a star party is a western term uh, that originated in the 60s when a lot of people had access to telescope so they all will plan a one night where they will take out their telescope preferably a new moon night uh, they'll take out their telescope they drive for several miles away from the city and it will be like a you know a party where instead of music you have discussion and instead of uh, you know drinks and food you have got the telescope and eye pieces and rather than enjoying dancing on the grooves you are enjoying the view of the cosmos so it came as so the term came as a star party and from there this has came in yeah so that is what a star party is so it's like a one night affair uh, with your equipment or somebody else's equipment you can just visit and enjoy the skies So any telescope visit? or oh, binocular okay. brand for sky watching uh there are many orion uh, celestron mm -hmm. sky watcher uh, uh, for binoculars you can go for bushnell you can go for nikon you can go for uh, you know conus there are a lot of brands for it for telescopes it all depends on your budget if you buy a indian home grown brand it will come out cheaper uh if you go for an imported brand the custom and all other charges make it slightly more expensive uh my recommendation is to uh, go for uh, you know uh, again it depends on what telescope what aperture what budget you are looking at so i won't be able to pinpoint but uh, you can search on internet and uh, most of the brands uh, are good always look for the bias rating and uh, uh, read on online resources about the telescope to get a valuable feedback or connect in your local astronomy group uh, about particular product that you are interested in buying and they will be there uh, sanjay bhardwaj please tell which book is best cosmos no doubt about it cosmos is a book that was written in the 80s by carl sagan read the book cover to cover there is no other book i have came across that can explain astronomy simpler than that all right other than that there are uh, books written by stephen hawking you can go by very basic very fundamental in nature uh, there are a lot of indian authors that you can find uh, books of patrick moore is another great author who uh, we lost very recently a couple of years back he was an expert on moon and he has written a lot of books on dark sky observation uh, just go for it all right so these are some of my recommendations visit your local library rather than buying issue those books and read it see making an investment is very easy but making the right investment is very difficult libraries planetariums they are constructed they have been created for your health okay take advantage of these resources uh, visit the local planetarium or science center visit the local library talk to people there search about these tools and you will have a very fascinating experience with them 
if you don't get the answer you are looking for you can always come back to people like me about more suggestion is total eclipse of the sun going to happen this year yes as i said uh in the last week of november uh, or i think uh, late december i'm sorry i'm not following this year's eclipse because it is happening in antarctica i have no plans to uh, take journey uh, down south that much also due to covid uh, there are very less chances of people traveling uh, i believe the next uh, uh, eclipse that you should really aim for is uh, in october 23 to the us traveling is easy it will be less uh you know uh, expensive very traveling and you'll find a lot of indians traveling to the us they travel anyways but uh, here also they'll be traveling a lot for the eclipse and uh, you can be in touch i am for sure traveling and uh, we can probably tag along if you're interested the next eclipse in, in, in india is going to happen in may 2031 in kerala so we have got about 10 years to plan for this 10 also. years 10 years exactly yeah. 10 years nothing is happening from india yeah Actually. and we had two eclipses back to back so now 10 year wait is uh, only what it makes a sense right <laughs> and yeah, what to wait yeah uh, some of the students mayna sharma also want to like to get more clarification you talk about the cosmos book if you can just little elaborate it again Something so, about Cosmos, Cosmos is the name of the book. There is a very nice documentary series available on uh, some OTT platform, I believe, on Hotstar, where Neil deGrasse has uh, uh, spoken or exhibited about it. Uh, Cosmos was written by Carl Sagan, one of the most prominent and famous science communicators uh, mankind has ever seen, and in last century at least. Uh, this book is available uh, at many bookstores. uh you can buy it uh, you will not make a mistake when you are buying this book so it is a very nice book it talks about the origin of the universe from the modern working day uh you know uh, the the modern day working of the universe right from the big bang all the way to all the prehistoric developments the explosions in space like the galaxies merging and the future also holds for us for example andromeda and uh, milky way are going to collide sun is going to explode so what exactly happened when a supernova is there so it really tells you in the most basic and simplest way that it is easy for even a layman a not a you know not a science person also to understand it that well so if you have never even read science outside of your school it is still going to help you understand if you are a science geek uh the language used and the things that has been explained here are so phenomenally easy that even you will get hooked to it and of course uh you know internet is the best resource for it always look for internet get the reviews of the product you are buying and you will not make a mistake yeah terrestrial and astronomical binoculars are same not really the same uh terrestrial binoculars are more focused on terrestrial objects uh, the sharpness and the optical coatings are different because they work in broad daylight astronomical binoculars are slightly different not that they both will not work in you know the other field they will be uh, handy but your experience will be better when you are observing through a binocular design and dedicated for night sky view terrestrial will give you sharpness during the day but you lose some sharpness or contrast during the night that's the difference between the two okay, we'll take this as a last question and we'll uh, wrap up the session i have the god decoration by q kaku how is it sir uh mr kaku is a great scientist utmost respect for him uh, what he has done and what he has uh you know introduced to the field of astronomy it's amazing if you are reading it uh it's a very nice book but the problem is that with his level of experience and uh, his expertise in the subjects some people have found that his writing has been a little over the line for them to understand if you can understand it it's an amazing book i personally read it and i loved the book but 
if it is slightly difficult then i would recommend you still read it but always consult with some amateur or some experts about the clarification of the question that arise remember asking question is very very important okay but it's a good book if you haven't finished finish it and i may i recommend you uh, reading books about uh, on uh, 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 special theory of relativity and general theory of relativity by brian green uh, his books on gravity are very nice so that is also you can uh, read after you complete this i think uh, with this we'll wrap up this session and i personally thank snay for taking up the session today and also for your generous uh, behavior like due to this technical glitches sometimes happen after taking so much precautions these things happen and we have to deal with it when we have to come online and do things like this so thank you for your generous approach and taking up the session Uh, not wasting students time much and thank you participants for your uh, joining uh, joining in on time for the session and getting your active feedback we can uh, analyze the fact that something uh, you have taken from the session which completely give worth to think and on behalf of planetarium i congratulate snay for all the effort you are making in terms of making this space science popularizing in young minds Uh, so that the young, uh, the new generation can witness the clear dark, dark skies with to its glory. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Snay. And we really thank you very much forward. for having me here. Thank you for yeah. joining. And we really look forward to work in this direction with such more uh, ventures in the coming future. Thank you. Sure. Bye bye. Bye. Take care, everyone. Take care.